Welcome everybody. Thanks for thanks for jumping in. Appreciate it. Hey, what's on? Yo. Um. What's happening, T Sickle? Nothing much. T Sickle. Nothing much. Just just excited uh, to go over this most recent update. It's a. Uh, it, it took a it took a bit of time and a lot of work, but uh, we have it now, and yeah, excited for all the the next stuff that we're working on and sharing it with the peeps. Hey everyone, it's Tom. Hey Tom. Great. So I'm sharing my screen now. A little bit of a slide deck just to guide the conversation. I think I'd like to go through some of these a bit rapid fire, um, just so we can have uh, some room for some discussions, some question and answers. Um, just to keep things uh, sort of organized and also get to as many topics and questions that you might have, uh, you can post to the chat. There's a chat on the right side, so we'll be monitoring that. And uh, yeah, so so at the very end, we may, may bring some people on stage with some questions, if time permitting, but uh, that's the most efficient way. So we have also multiple streams going on. We have a stream directly into TribeXR. And, um, town hall video call uh, as well as on Twitch. So we'll be monitoring all of those things and so we'll have questions coming in from that. Great. We're also recording here on uh, for YouTube later. So yeah, that's also a place to, to throw some questions uh, after the fact and we'll, we'll be there to answer them. Very cool. Um, so yeah, so I guess we'll get started now. Um, here's the list of things that we're going to be discussing today. So, uh, as we've done in previous town halls, we'll go through the update. Um, Tom will talk a little bit about the state of Tribe XR, just, just a general overview of, of where we're at. Um, then we'll get into some of the updates. You may have already played with a bunch of these things, tried them out, um, just making sure everybody has visibility and, yeah, understanding on, of, of, of what we've done and what's to come next. So... Yeah, just to get into it, if you're ready, Tom, what's up with Tribe? Hey, guys. Um, first of all, yeah, thanks, thanks all for coming. Um, we really appreciate you guys you know, spending time, coming to listen to us, coming to ask questions. Please, you know, if you have questions or need to interrupt us or, or want to ask anything, just, just raise your hands and we're happy to take them. Um, so yeah, what's up with Tribe? Um, we're just back from IMS Ibiza, which was a pretty successful conference over in Europe. Um, uh, and yeah, we met with a few partners there. We were working with Alpha Theta, formerly known as Pioneer DJ, um, just demoing Tribe and meeting with various partners, um, such as the Pete Tong DJ Academy, whose content is in Tribe and um, various other you know software partners, music partners and so on. Uh, the conference is actually organized by Beatport. Um, and uh, there's lots of artists there as well. So like speakers at the event included uh, DJs like Fatboy Slim and I think Darude was there. And there was a panel with uh, Pete Tong and Nicole Mudeba and um, Tisha and uh, Adam Bayer. So that, that was pretty awesome to, to see. And yeah, it was good for Tribe. Like we, we managed to get our product um, in front of a lot of people. And we also talked about some, you know, upcoming partnership stuff, um, more of which we will reveal as those partnerships develop. Um, so the main things for us at the moment are in terms of products and Ozan will probably talk a little bit more in depth later. Um, we are continuing to improve, uh, the VR and mixed reality, um, version of tribe. Um, so we've we've shipped uh, the Pioneer DJ Flex 4 um, in the last version. I think it's 11.0. And um, we've audit also added um, PC 2D mode, which is, you know, if you haven't got a VR headset with you, but you have your gaming PC, you can now log into Tribe and use it um, in 2D mode just on a on a laptop um, and take all the lessons and, and DJ and, and John workshops and so on and that's part of a broader strategy which is we're trying to make tribe available to all of our customers all of our users um across pretty much every device that they're on so this year we are we're planning to ship to pc but also uh, to mac os 
iOS, Android, and eventually Vision Pro. Um, but yeah, the part of the reason for that is just to make it easier for anyone to kind of join in with workshops or, you know, if you're out of home and uh, you haven't got your headset with you, but you want to sort of jump into Tribe and and join a workshop or, or just, you know, DJ in your own time or take some lessons, like we want to make that as easy as possible for as many people as possible. And we think that's going to help Tribe um, continue to grow. We think uh, some of the most successful VR products um, like VR Chat and Rec Room and so on, like are available both in VR, but also um, on um, computers and, and uh, yeah, we, th we think this is like going to really help the community grow. Um, we've seen a lot of growth since the launch of our free trial and subscription product. Um, so to give you an idea, our monthly active users are about four times the number that they, they were prior to us launching the free trial and subscription. And we do have like a really engaged, uh, highly engaged core um, user base and uh, it's growing, which is great. Um, you know, VR itself is a little bit seasonal. So we're we're currently in you know sp spring going into summer and that's normally when you see you know generally usage of tribe and all VR products like dips before picking up in the summertime um, and then but the busiest time of years for us generally have been you know Q4 and Q1 so like late autumn winter into you know probably March April. Um, and um, but yeah, this year we're going to be shipping our two D two D mode, and and we expect that it's going to offset some of the seasonality, just like you know, el enabling people to kind of keep using Tribe, and um, you know, if they're not so much in the headset, which which seems to be what happens. Um, part of the reason for that seasonality as well is that like our audience is mainly you know fifty percent in the U S. It's about thirty percent in Europe, so like eighty percent plus is Northern Hemisphere. So it kind of sinks a little bit to the Northern Hemisphere seasons. Um, so yeah, so we we are excited about that rollout. And then we're also really thinking a lot about like making some, you know, ongoing improvements to the core products. So, you know, more mixers and controllers, better lessons. Um, we've rolled out a new point system, which is awesome. And loads of people are on the leaderboards already. And we want to make, you know, the the progression and and sort of points and and uh, and all of that a key part of um, of tribe so that you know if you come in and you're a beginner you can kind of go through various kind of um, steps and and sort of increase your experience but you also get more points and we create more contests and so on um, so yeah that's an area that we're going to be looking at um, and we've had a long debate yesterday with the team around some of the new features um, that we'd, we'd like to bring in. Um, a lot of people have historically asked for better room effects and crowds and things like that. Um, we hear you, we're gonna try and bring some of those into Tribe. We've been historically a little limited when it comes to the performance on headset, but um, the headsets are getting better and better. So I think there is an opportunity to step that up. Um, and um, yeah, we, we, we've been discussing like other real kind of material improvements. Um, and, you know, we've recently implemented uh, various music streaming integrations. Those seem to be going well. Um, we One other thing that I probably should mention is as part of this uh, expansion of Tribe and, and going omni-channel and allowing people to join Tribe from any device, um, we've been sort of very provisionally experimenting with a very simple um, widget, like a version of the Flex 4 that's, that can be used in, in your web browser. So that's something that we are um, excited. As, as it comes together, we're going to be sharing it with our community. And just, um, but the idea there is that it's going to be something that would be very low friction to use. And um, it will start off as basically a prototype, but I think it can evolve into a product with some, you know, real strong capabilities. So being able to join a workshop and actually interact um, through your browser and um, taking some lessons through there as well and um, interacting with the community. So, yeah, so really it's about this year, it's about making Tribe easier to use on any device that you're on. Um, you know, VR and mixed reality are always going to be our core. It's always going to be the best way to experience Tribe. But there are a lot of other customers or, or, or users of Tribe who um, 
you know, will be away from their computers or their headsets. Um, and uh, yeah, we're hoping that sort of better serve them. Um, and yeah, so in uh, other things operationally, we we raised a bit more money. Um, so that's good. It allows us to slightly expand our team. Um, we're excited to um, uh, announce that we've, we've, we have a new engineer who joined us this week, um, Zach. Zach's going to be helping us both with the web product and our, our Tribe uh, Unreal Engine product. And um, we also have a couple of um, interns joining us from UC Berkeley in the Bay Area. Um, extremely smart. They're starting next uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, they're going to be helping us with some like product ideation and testing and things like that. And um, yeah, we, we we do plan to kind of continue expanding the team and um, yeah, continue investing and just really making the product better and better. Um, and as part of that, uh, Lee has been working on a survey um, that is going to go out to our entire audience. Um, just like we we really want to hear a bit more about like the features you guys want us to build, some improvements we can make, any raw feedback that you have on areas the product can be improved. Um, so that will be going out hopefully in the next 24, 48 hours. Um, but yeah, like we do read that feedback and it does um, directly feed into our product roadmap. Um, as as do uh, feedback, uh, you know, feedback points provided by our, our users on Discord and other channels. So like, please do, if you, if you want certain features or you're interested in uh, providing us feedback or you're frustrated with something, just let us know. Like we do listen to them. And um, we obviously have to prioritize based on like capacity and like what we can actually execute on at any one time. But, you know, there's a lot of interesting points that have come from our community that have turned into real features, and we'd love you to keep um, doing that. So those are the main things. Um, yeah, I at, at that point probably pass back over to uh, to Lee, to T Sigel, and um, to Ozan. So thanks a lot, guys. Um, yeah, thanks, Tom. They had a great, great overview. I'll uh, we'll get into a little bit more detail here and uh, say time for questions on on all those things as well. Cool. So. What, what did we do since the last town hall? So we, we got a couple of big things. Um, the first one is the Flex 4, right? The, this is uh, this amazing uh, versatile controller that is also quite affordable. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, it's our first controller style. So, you know, it's not, not standalone, a standalone piece of gear. Um, so we, we've uh, implemented this, this um, tablet style uh, record box mobile type um, visual display um, that you would see actually if you you were to use this um, and uh, if you played around with it one of the, the the most enjoyable parts are the performance pads um, just great ways to uh, add in some pad effects really quickly um, yeah there's we also implemented the smart fader which uh, enables for um, transitions between different tempos and in a sort of automated fashion uh, if you haven't tried it out definitely Give it a spin and yeah, tell us what you think. We've also implemented the leaderboards. So uh, this is just a way to track groove points and to track what users are doing in app and reward accordingly. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a great success so far. Uh, we hope to do some more with it, add more ways to have groove points uh, be acquired through, through workshops, through doing the repetitive things that people love to do in Tribe. Um, but yeah, it's a great start so far on this. Uh, if you're a Steam user, uh, leaderboards are coming on that platform soon. And desktop mode, I have a little video here of, of me using this. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, I do highly recommend trying. As um, Tom mentioned, it's uh, hopefully a, a big part of our feature with Tribe. Uh, so we'd love for all of you power users out there to give it a spin. Um, does require you know some some sort of gaming type PC. Um, but, uh, yeah, with, with, with this desktop mode, um, you can actually, uh, use your mouse to control everything in tribe. So Hunter, our main dev did, uh, uh, a metric ton of work to make this, you know, turn this 3d app into fully 2d, um, perfection basically. So yeah, give that a spin. You can, um, activate that. If you're using the meta PC VR app, you can right click on the app in your library. And there's now an option to start in desktop mode. Um, similarly, on Steam, you can also start it in the, the non-Steam VR mode. So yeah, I'd lo love for you to try it out. 
Um, it also works in multiplayer as well, so you can do back-to-back uh, -back sessions with um, VR users and other desktop users. So, yeah, really, really um, uh, great. We hope to expand on on the use of this and make it a part of the tribe workflow. Great. So that, those are the two major things. Again, I'm going a little quickly because I do want to hear from you about what, what you think about some of these things and. Um, you know, here's some feedback of what, what you want to see next with them. Um, the next topic I want to discuss is IMS. So as Tom mentioned, we were in Ibiza for IMS uh, International Music Summit. So here I have some media from this. Um, I don't know, Ozan, do you, want to, do you want to chime in here? Do you want to um, give some context on, on the event and maybe some, some of our learnings from it? Uh, well, nothing beyond, I think, what you um, already have in mind. Uh, I can speak to some of the themes that came up uh, as we were you know, doing it, if that would be helpful. Yeah, sure. Um, let me just uh, get my notes here. Uh, while, while you bring that up, I'll just mention, so just to set the scene here, you're seeing on the left side is our stand. So we were uh, uh, invited by Pioneer DJ um to to join them at their stand it was a, actually you see in the second video you see this sort of massive array of equipment um all of the new stuff all the alpha theta gear as well the rotary mixer which was amazing to play with um yeah we got to interface with uh some people in the industry uh, a lot of djs came through the stand and also partnered with uh, Pete Tonk DJ Academy to uh, have a little competition in in one of the uh, Carl Cox lessons so we, we did a leaderboard and had people compete to see if they can win uh, some some merch, basically. So so yeah, it was it was great to give some demos. Um, we see on the right side we got Hoppa there with Sam. Sam is very it's very happy to be here. Uh, so yeah, it was a great time. Um, what was that? Got anything to add to that? Um, can I screen share real quick, or is that uh, not to complicate things? But uh, uh, yeah, I think you could. Or... Yeah, I don't have permissions at the moment to screen share, but um... okay. It's all right. Maybe if we can get that sorted. But in the meantime, um, just poking through with some of the themes that came up, uh, we were discussing with our partners the web DJ player and um, got some positive feedback around that. Um, also, just maybe as a high level topic is how do we build tools to empower you guys even more to be able to promote yourselves and share the, the great content that you're building? So, you know, ability to record, for example, not just the music, but also the video and the ability to post that content to places like YouTube and Instagram. That was a thing that came up. Um, there's also just the, some learning about what's happening in the music industry at large. It is changing. It's certainly changing um, more towards electronic music that had a, this big surge in the industry at large. And then also more towards social networks and fandom as a way of um, engaging with the market. So I guess to maybe simplify it, it's less of a lean back music experience and more of an interactive music experience. And Tribe Falls really in that sweet spot. So we do exactly that. You know, as members of the the community and the platform, you're able to um, you're able to like stream music, interact with other people, and hang out and dance and things like that. So um, there was that. And then let's see. There's a variety of like little features that we might want to add to sort of increase the, you know, the product and the engagement. Also finding ways of leveling up not only, um, you know, the, the product, but the community at large and the mentors. Like we have this leaderboard now. What if these leaderboards lead to things like certification? What if those certifications are taken seriously in the industry amongst the Pitong DJ Academy and amongst Pioneer DJ? Um, so that was a theme that came up. Um, more visual effects, that's been a common request that um, people have been asking for, and that sort of was definitely permeating throughout the entire event. Yes, lasers, like like we have, we see here on the screen share. Yeah, so like the thing that's <laughs> happening at the, you know, Dotville, like a big part of that experience is the atmosphere, basically. It's the people, it's the lasers. The music is great too, and that's clutch, but um, yeah, a big part of it is the, the visual experience and the production quality. So yeah, those are yep. some of the themes. Yeah, those are some of the themes. Yeah, thanks, Ozan. So yeah, uh, on the right was this just amazing um, uh, final night there uh, on on top of the castle, basically at a rave. Did quite quite inspiring. Yeah, for for things that we can possibly do and try. Cool. Moving on. So I uh, I now want to switch over to talk about uh, something that's 
coming out for the community, it's uh, we're going to be doing some community packs. Um, so on the left side, we have our track packs. Uh, we want to do something with uh, engaging with some of our amazing producers that we have in the community. So if you are you are one or you know one, um, we're going to be taking submissions soon. So we just have to set that up. Um, but yeah, look out for that probably in the next week or two. Um, and yeah, we hope to get some some music from our community into Tribe. The same way on the right side, we're looking at uh, Montella's amazing visuals that that he made. Uh, we'd love to grab some visuals from the community too, because we see that the create ma massive amount of creativity, uh, especially you know, scanning the workshops and all in all the calls, um, people really enjoy customizing their background. So, if you have something that you've you know generated yourself, then love to to check it out. Maybe uh, add it in Tribe for everybody else to enjoy. Look out for that. So we have a survey coming up. I uh, won't spoil it too much, um, but uh, yeah, look look out for that. And uh, reviews. Reviews are super important. Uh, most of you already wrote, wrote them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super important for our sustainability and to get the word out there. So if you haven't already, please do so. All right. So that's where we're at right now. So I'll move over to this slide so we can take a look. Um, yeah, now now we can take some questions. Let's see. Let's see what we have in chat. So I think someone mentioned an incorporating music production. They they had mentioned Ableton. Um, yeah, it was on our. Do you want to take that one? What 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 are the possibilities around music production or in, uh, integrating with uh, other software that people are using currently. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great idea. It's also a consistent note that we've gotten from people. And it's a, basically the, the thing that we should do and the place that we want to get. Um, I would say that it's basically the, the fullest expression of, um, of, of artistic expression. So the, the fact that we can now mix existing tracks in the virtual context is so cool because, you know, we can make music and create experiences and such. But to be able to produce music, it, you put your own stamp on it, right? Your own signature on it. And th that's just the big open-ended, beautiful thing. It's also complicated. Uh, the, 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 the techniques involved in producing music are harder and the technology is a bit more um, involved. So um, there's a variety of things that we'll need to do to get there. But long story short, building a virtual music studio, one that where you can mix music, you can perform music, but you can also make music and produce music is the kind of the holy grail. And something that you can take with you everywhere. So imagine having this mobile music production studio. Instead of in the Hollywood Hills, you can just like take it with you wherever you go. If you're on the plane, you're in a hotel room. If you're, you know, at home, um, you've got this massive production studio. So that's that's yeah. the that's the goal uh, for sure. We just got to get there. That'd be excellent. Yeah, with the uh, the tribe synth and and the drum machine, we already have a, a little bit of a foundation for that. But yeah, look, looking forward to what what else we can do. Um, yeah, we, we're getting in, you know, I think people are here with some great suggestions. Uh, if you have any questions on, on, on the previous update, love to, to hear them now. But since, since we have so many here, let's just get through a couple and then we'll move on to, uh, to what's coming up. Um, yeah, just to mention here about Pico, um, plan, we are planning on, on bringing that to parity. So look, look forward to that. We want to forget about our Pico users. Um, yeah. I think that's all I see for now. Uh, uh, there might be some coming in right now, so we'll, we'll, we'll have another QA session at the end, and maybe we'll we'll open the stage up uh, if we have some extra time. So let's get into what's coming up. Hosan, do you want to want to take this one? Uh, well, the you know big thing for us are the reviews essentially, um, because that is the um, the sort of the, the impression that we make on the industry and in the store are what come through our community reviews. And we have these two kinds of reviews, the very positive reviews and then the very negative reviews. And the positive reviews are basically our users, people, you know, you guys, right? The people that use the product, love the product, understand its, you know, its value and so on, and they come in with the five stars and everything. Then there's the people that just don't like subscriptions. To, to put it plainly, like there's something about the subscription culture that really uh, angers, you know, a certain category of users. And, and I get it, you know, I'm, I, I feel that way in certain cases as well, but it's just so necessary for us. And it's such a good fit for um, our community and the platform. So we have a subscription model. 
And with that in mind, we get all these like, you know, one star reviews. And now they're competing, right? It's like, okay, well, what is the truth here? Is it a great product or is it, you know, not a great product? We think it's a great product and it's going to add a lot of value to a lot of people that are interested in DJing and music. And we want that to be clear to new users. So we're basically, you know, trying to incentivize the community to drop a positive or drop a review, you know, hopefully a positive one, but just drop a review of whatever you guys are feeling and thinking and incentivizing that with a new environment, an unlock new environment, a little present that we would, you know, a gift that we would give back to you. Um, uh, it's this awesome new environment. So Sam worked with Thomas to um, implement this thing inside of Tribe. It looks incredible, to be honest. I, I tried it for the first time yesterday and and, um, and Lee also kind of screen shared and showed it to me. It looks so good. It's a lot like the hip hop ride in that it's this animated experience, much like a dark ride in Disney. But frankly, it's even a little better because it's something to do with the scale of it and the way you're elevated up in the air. It just looks so cool. Um, so hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy it. And um, and so that is the, the Pioneer DJ. Yep. It's also the Pioneer DJ, like the official Pioneer DJ environment. We work with them to trick out this theme thing that's, imagine, you know, bombed out Berlin, Bergheim techno type uh, environment. That's what this is, you know, themed by. And anyway, we got the blessing from Pioneer DJ. Yep, I uh, I purposely um, just just put a screenshot in here to to not spoil it because uh, and I don't think it does because there's uh, as as Ozon said there, it's a moving ride so you kind of have this you go on this journey that's about three or three or so minutes long um, so yeah it's it, it's it's really great can't wait for everybody to to give it a shot I'll take this one um, so this is actually the same slide I copied it from. Uh, from our last town hall, um, of course, we have one of, one of the, th the three that we were planning done, which is the Flex 4 on the top left. Um, up next, we have both the A9 on the bottom. The A9 is this, uh, this, the, the modern version of the, the 900. It it's, has a couple of additional features. Um, definitely great for back-to-backs in real life. It has, has the two Q, the separate cues. Um, there's separate mic effects. There, there's, there's just a, a, it's a, it's a bit of a quality of life uh, upgrade on it. So hope to bring that soon. And uh, the Flex 10 on the top right, which is uh, this upgraded version of the Flex 4. It's got four channels on it, so you have that flexibility there. Um, has uh, all the bells and whistles, a bit more buttons. Right on the Flex 4, you have to use, you have to rely a little bit more on the shift. Uh, key, which is like on the bottom left of the jog wheel. Um, the great thing about the Flex 4, with that shift key, you can you can do almost everything you need. Um, you just kind of have to get used to using shift um, to, to access like the the other functions of the same button. Uh, so the Flex 10 is a bit, you know, bit bigger, a um, bit more expensive um, because of this, but uh, uh, it's it, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. And I guess I, I've buried the lead here because it's uh, the amazing thing is stems. So on the top left above the loop section, uh, there is the ability to select um, the drums and 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 the vocals and the bass, right? So you can you can actually turn those things uh, on and off um, and sort of remix on the fly, right? More so than just just turning down your low EQ, your mids, um, using their the, this advanced technology, you can isolate these sections of the music. So you really have a ton of flexibility. That said, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, difficult. There's a difficulty there in implementation as it just it requires this advanced technology. So uh, what we're working right now and already to some success, um, and Andrew on our team is, is working hard and doing a great job on this, is to incorporate that in a way that works with the standalone headset. Do you want to be limited to PC VR only and the power of that? Um, but yeah, using using cloud tech and, and a couple of other things, we're able to um, bring in stems, and that, that's the goal. So this this might take a bit of time just to get that technology finessed, but uh, I think it'll be well worth the wait. Great, Ozan, you want to talk about the uh, the video call stage? Um, sure. Yeah. So the whole experiment here is releasing something out to you guys and then dialoguing with you about how to use it. So we release the simulation of the equipment and, and we go from there. And we've like layered on a variety of features along the way, these social features and whatnot. And then in that spirit, we um, 
one thing we discovered mostly by uh, spearheaded and led by Nina Kreese is this idea of um, the kind of round robin style uh, experience where in the context of a social um, video call and a workshop, people want to get up on stage and perform and play for you know each other, right? And the idea is that you don't have to play for a really long time. You could play for a three minute set, a 30 second set, just mix a, cute, a bit here and there. And it becomes this really fun rapid fire carousel of playing and socializing and hanging out. The thing is that Nina and the rest of the mentors have had to do this manually. They've had to be like, okay, you next up on stage. <laughs> okay. Now you off stage. Now you up on stage. And the whole thing, is, you know, it's, it's a little bit um, clunky right now because of the product. So we figured uh, what we'll do is we'll optimize for this. So we're going to build some first class features where a host can spin up a room, can quote unquote open the stage, and then we all can add our name to the list. And when our name is up, we're up on stage, we get our time, we get to play, and then we get rotated off stage and it all just happens seamlessly. So the goal is to certainly make life easier for um, you know Nina and the mentors. Uh, but then also maybe create a bit of culture where, you know, you all could host your own calls and just have this predictability where you can open up the stage and kind of create a vibe, right? Make it a party. So yeah, that's the, uh, the video call staging feature coming soon. So yeah, a little bit to, to, um, the multiplayer the social functions, uh, we're working on a spectator mode for multiplayer. This has been asked for, um, a lot um, for for good reason. So uh, Hunter's currently working on this, and that um, we're still we're still working on the exact implementation. So I don't have a, a screenshot example, but um, the basic gist of it is it will you will be able to have spectators in your room in in VR um, that are not necessarily operating the decks, right? So you could it's similar to the way video call works now. You can bring somebody on stage. You can prevent them from using the decks. Um, yeah, and so so not only does it you know prevent some some sort of you know either you know just just people not know, knowing what they're doing necessarily or not knowing the etiquette um, or just you know enable performances in that live space with other people. Um, yeah, I th think this will have a, a big impact and just just be a, a great quality of life improvement uh, in the multiplayer space. Great. So I'll, I'll, t I'll talk about uh, our, our, our last major feature here, um, bringing in ToxMod, um, which is basically a service which will help us prevent uh, toxic um, speech and behavior in inside of these social spaces, including the rooms and including uh, uh, voice calls. So uh, basically, this it's, it's an automated system that kind of scans for this type of thing. It's really... Um, it's it's very tunable, and the idea isn't to prevent any you know sort of normal, reasonable speech. But um, when it reaches a certain threshold of you know be, being sure that you know this is not this is not proper behavior, um, we we have the means to to do something to to mute people, to ban people, um, you know, trying to pr basically protect our users um, from those experiences. Um, so it's something that we we know we have to prioritize moderation and yeah just having a, a safe positive space inside of tribe so this tool will definitely be able to do that so more information coming out about that we're still working on the implementation of that but yeah excited to bring that in and make sure everybody's having a good time and is safe in our social spaces great um yeah ozan do you want to tackle tackle some of these um these are kind of more a little bit more long term. These are just uh, things that we're working on uh, that you can um, look forward to. Uh, we don't have an exact release date for some of these things, but yeah, it was on. Uh, yeah, I mean, just to hammer through them, um, we know we want to upgrade from uh, to Unreal Engine Five. That's the latest and greatest, and it unlocks a ton of um, new features for us or new technology. It also makes our lives easier when when it comes to development. So that's a thing that's going to happen. And I mean, if you guys haven't kept up with what's happening with Epic and Unreal, and then also Unreal Engine for Fortnite, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's amazing technology from a graphics perspective, but it's also pretty amazing from game and culture and this idea of metaverse. So anyway, we'll be keeping up to date with what's happening there. We also have such a good relationship with Pioneer DJ, now Alpha Theta. Maybe if you guys are curious, we could talk about their rebranding. They're really going aggressive with their new brand, Alpha Theta. 
But the Pioneer DJ brand still exists, of course, and it's attached to the equipment. So we plan on adding more equipment, more simulation according to your guys' request and whatnot. All right. There's also the there's Alpha Theta specific equipment. So we don't have any plans or agreements around that. But um, I have heard some users. Um, I know uh, we got a question here in the chat about that too, about uh, specifically the rotary mixer. Uh, there's all there's also uh, a few other that a uh, few others that they have releasing and to be released. Yeah. And uh, and they're also very supportive of us. Like when we meet with them, we're definitely part. You know, we're in their psyche and you know in their consciousness and um, on their roadmap. So it's going to be fun to see how that all blends together. So that yeah, we we went to uh, Yokohama, Japan last summer, and we actually we actually got to see the prototype of the rotary mixer back in July, I think it was. So we had to <laughs> stay very quiet on that. Um, but it's an awesome piece of kit. And I think it would work really, really well in virtual mixed reality. Um, uh, there definitely is um, a discussion happening to see whether we may be able to bring that in in future, but it's not one of the products that we have an agreement to bring in. Um, we do have an agreement to bring in a couple of, you know, the, the new mixer that's replacing the DJ 900 Nexus 2 and also um, one of the Flex products, the Flex 10 um so yeah those those are two that are definitely on 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 the uh, roadmap um but yeah euphonia would be great and i can highly recommend trying it out if you get the chance it's a really nice mixer yeah and then let's see then the with regard to the web dj player i'd be curious to get your all's feedback on on it but it's primary reason well one thing is brad wanted to do it and <laughs> so you know the we have a team of, of, of artists, essentially. I think of them as, as engineers, artists, and talent. They're kind of like athletes out on the court. And when they want to do something and they got this creative epiphany, it's like, well, let's, let's check it out. Let's go. Uh, so he wanted to do it, and he's making so much progress. And then we're like, OK, well, is this going to be good for us? And I think the answer is yes, we're going to check it out. But the rationale for it is that it just makes things so accessible that you all, if you're, you know, really in the mood you can definitely jump in the headset and have this immersive experience and the sense of presence and you know, use both your hands and have the physical spatial experience but if you're feeling more casual or if you're on the go you could jump onto a web page and have um, a lightweight version of that so you have access to the equipment have access to the social features but all through the browser you can invite your friends you know that don't have a headset to come and join and hang out so that's going to be fun to um, experiment with as we go forward the leaderboards we just launched, so I think we're just you know waiting to hear feedback from that. We've got folks that are already gaming the system, so if you guys know like you know the the cheat codes and whatnot, you can hammer away at it. Probably what we'll do is we declare victory on like season one of the leaderboard at some point and kind of hand out some rewards and badges and stuff, and then and reset the leaderboard. The cheat code is is B A B A up down B A left right B A select start. That's just one, so yeah. just so everybody knows here. Yeah, I hope you wrote that down. And then um, the website merge is, is like this pretty exciting new initiative where um, Zach has kind of painted a vision of how we can up update our website and it's going to play into this web technology strategy that we're, we're thinking of. So it's more accessible um, for you all uh, on the web and we can, I can expand more on that if you guys are curious. Yeah, and then visual tools and playlists. I mean, again, those are the themes that came up at IMS. And I can even see in the chat here that people are really interested in you know, virtual production and. DJ tools and whatnot. Um, so it's kind of a creative expression. We, we got to give it to you. The only thing I'm curious about from maybe in Q&A is playlists. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, you know, Maybe we can be more explicit about it, but it's kind of like the DNA of a good mix. It's sort of the, the crystal core of you know, the whole experience is I need to trick out my playlist. I need to exactly figure it out, have it just so, and then throw it onto the decks and perform. So the amount of time it comes with massaging the playlist and editing the playlist, like that may be a big part that we, it's sort of a shortcoming of our product at the moment is we need to have like better playlist management stuff. Uh, but I sort of welcome your feedback on that. So anyway, some comments on that list of things. Thanks, Ozan. Yeah, there's there's more in the, in the works too, but uh, I don't want to spoil everything. Um, just just that's, that's kind of what is on our mind now for, for immediate uh, consideration. Great. So we're going to move on to QA. We have uh, uh, quite a bit that came in now. I'll just move to this slide um, just so you can uh, be reminded of what we talked about. 
Um, someone mentioned YouTube, streaming to YouTube. I think that's something we definitely like to do. Um, you can stream now through RTMP. Um, it's just a little complicated, you know, to get that key going. You would um, use the YouTube. You would use the URL with a slash between and then the key. So it's a bit, it's a bit cumbersome to to type that all in. But uh, so it's it's something we'd like to add. Uh, just the ability to directly you stream to YouTube. So that's definitely a possibility. And yeah, we should we should definitely do that. Um, um, yeah, uh, maybe Ozan, you take this question about uh, uh, possibility of partnering with big dance events um, with, with, you know, in their main stages or something like that, Yeah, well, like a Tomorrowland or, or, or you know, anything yeah. you can think of like that. Yeah, yeah. So the, that, that's the theme that came up at, at um, IMS in Ibiza is just feeling the presence of these real world events are it's just significant i guess for one thing it's just so cool right to be out there and to be in the atmosphere you feel that energy it's a big part of it and furthermore it seems to be you know what's driving our interest in these virtual experiences because we re it's we resonate with those real world events it's storytelling so long story short i think that's the fantasy right that's the the hope that's the plan is to figure out a way of merging with real life events in some form so whether it's you know just a simulation of that event, like the stage inside of Tribe, that alone would be really great. Um, but then maybe even having a real time tie-in with those events. So as those events happen, there's something happening you know in the mirror world inside of Tribe in the quote-unquote metaverse. That's what we I love to go in that direction because it just adds so much more significance to everything we're doing in the virtual world. Great. Um, so uh, I'll take this one. Someone asked about um, uh, hand tracking and uh, specifically haptic gloves. I think that's super exciting. Hand tracking is definitely on the roadmap. Um, the uh, some of the initial experiments with with Quest um, were interesting. I think there's a lot of work to be done there. It's not just something that we can flip a switch, um, especially with what our app is with uh, this sort of fine control that you need. Um, to be able to operate the DJ decks. So yeah, it remains to be seen how how effective it is. I think it's something that people really want and at least the ability to to, to try. So I and I do think it is the future, much to um, you know, to what you said, Swerves, like there's uh, you know, every day there's new technology out there. When it comes to hand tracking, I'm sure Meta is working on on their own like 2.0 version of all this stuff. And then yeah, just you know, the potential of haptic gloves, right? Some of the difficulty is around how do you how do you sense that you're actually touching a control? How do you, it, right now it's this haptic feedback that occurs in the controller, and you get the visual uh, sense of the control actually highlighting blue. So uh, that's a little bit of a, a challenge there. Um, I'll, to answer your specific question about the gloves, uh, it's it's hard to imagine like currently developing for that as it's this kind of expensive technology that not many people have. I think it's super exciting, and if there's a way to do it, we probably should. Um, but yeah, it's hard. It's hard to justify, you know, sacrificing some of these other really exciting things um, for something that most of our users can't immediately access anyway. But down the road, I th I think it'll be more. Like I said, the technology will be better and it'll be more mainstream. Perhaps there's a, a a ring or a wristband that you wear. Like these are all potentials for the future. So. Um, hand tracking is in in some form is definitely on its way, and then yeah, we'll see how far we can take that, and then you know going into the you know possibilities of the Apple Vision Pro and what they're doing there. Cool. I'm just uh, just scanning here. Yeah. So just some feedback um, in the chat about playlists. Uh, we got that on Twitch and also here um, from Ali B in, in Discord, just how important playlist is, having some number system. Those suggestions are all good. I think when we're ready to tackle that, we'll probably want to put out a survey or, or you know, formally or informally, you know, to see exactly what you want. That's like a, a big topic, right? We, we do need, we do know that we, we need to, to improve the playlist, but, you know, how we do it uh, is, is, a, is a whole other question that we'd love to get your feedback on. What, what kind of features do you want to see with playlisting? Um, 
several apps do it in different ways. So yeah, that's I'm excited to to jump into that when we get the uh, get the time. Uh, I see. Yep. Go ahead. People are uh, asking to speak. We've got Crispy and Marshy. Um, should we invite them up? Yeah, I think it's time to do that. I wanted to get through. Uh, I think we got through uh, most of the questions. Feel free to uh, uh, request to speak here if we didn't get to your question or you, you have a new one. Um, last thing, I'll uh, just uh, I, I see I see boys here. Um, yeah, so so we we did mention earlier. I think you you missed it at the beginning, but we did talk about uh, room staging. So that's that's being worked on as we speak. Um, so yeah, that could prevent people from jumping behind the decks and just have this kind of flow between spectator and performer. So that's that's on its way. Okay, cool. So yeah, feel free to uh, to jump on stage now. We'll take some questions and then. Uh, I'll be jumping into the the video call later, so we'll we'll do some overtime inside of Tribe. Try that one again. If anybody else has any questions, yeah, we'll take them now. And if not, then uh, we'll see you in Tribe. Uh, KTZ asks when I'll when I will be in a mankini. Um, I, I right now. That's I, well, yes, I'm I I'm pretty much always wearing one. Um, you just there's just no way for you to know it, but there will be no proof. So just sorry to disappoint you. Yeah, one thing I'll, I'll remind while we wait for see if uh, any final questions come in is that if you're interested in our, we have a resident DJ program. If you're over 18, um, yeah, talk, you can submit things there. Um, submit uh, some mixes to me. So talk to me, and I'll give you some information on it. Just shoot me a DM. If you're under 18, uh, that's where the young resident DJ program comes into play. So you can DM Charlotte about that. Oh, I wanted to shout out before I forget, uh, shout out to, to Charlotte helping out uh, on the chat, feeding us questions. And um, we'll be putting this together in an edit soon. And Atomic VR, the legend, is doing all the streaming today. So thanks to them for making this happen. All right, Marshy, what's up? We finally got you on stage. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, so my question was, I don't know if you saw my comment or not. I know some people did, two people reacted to it. Um, would it be possible to have like a system that would tell you which songs are easier to like kind of mix together? Not basically like giving you songs that would be like, here you go, have fun. This is how you mix them. But like a system that would tell you like, Okay, this song is easier to mix with this song. Figure it yes. out. Have fun. Something like yeah. that. Like a difficult yeah, I think. Thing. No, that's a that's a great question. I think Ozon did uh, respond quickly. Ozon, do you have anything else to add about that potential around guest um, this? Yeah, mixability, song discovery potential there. Yeah. Again, I think that's sort of the heart of the business, right? That's like figuring out your playlist. And some of it could be real time, like I'm playing a song and I want a quick recommendation on the next song. And it could be also part of your preparation. You could be like putting together and crafting your playlist and working with the system to figure out the next, you know, another track that works. And the way you would decide what works is partially, is it easy to mix, but also does it sound good? And does it tell the story that I want? And does it have the energy that I want? So the question then becomes having the metadata for all those things, like, okay, this is the phrasing and it's going to work. Okay, this is the BPM and the key and this is going to work. This is the energy level and it's going to work. And then, um, and then the, uh, the, there's, you know, Montel has been working a lot with figuring out ways of understanding the phrasing within a song. So having maybe some tools around that to like lock it in. But long story short is it's also part of music discovery. Like, oh, I want to discover this new artist or this new track and so on. And, but you don't know where to start. Having a system that helps with that would be really beneficial. One little baby thing that we want to do in the short term is make it easier for you to preview the tracks. At the moment inside a tribe, you need to grab a track and load it on the deck and play it in order to just preview it and understand whether you want or not. And it's actually fairly cumbersome to do that. What if in the menu, yeah. you, when you click a track, you could just listen immediately to you know what it sounds like and decide if it's even the vibe that you're looking for. You know, Marshy, where you could try also is the Flex 4 now has the smart fader. And that's something that Sam implemented. And basically, yeah. you could throw two, tra two tracks on there, use the Smart Fader to mix the two, and it'll do it for you. It'll do the beat matching and the, and the bass swapping. And so at least you'll know it sounds good technically, 
then you can decide whether you like it or not. So that's something that you might want to try out. So uh, yeah, we have Mixer to Fixer on stage. What's up? Always good to see you. Good day, folks. Good day. Good day. So this is a um, this is a suggestion that I put forth a, a little while now, and I was wondering what is the likelihood of aligning the music management as much as you can to the existing um PDJ record box um file system. So currently, to get the songs locally on your headset, what you'll have to do is just drag it in a folder. So what if you could do it similarly to how you would do it on the um on the mobile phone, right? You use the record box and you have basically the same um well they don't call it crates, they call it um playlists. You have the same playlist and you could export it to the headset. Yeah? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think um uh this is referring to just making it easier to get all the record box data onto the headset. I think that is a great idea. I think it would take working with the record box team, which uh, as, as Tom mentioned, we met with them. Uh, I, I didn't, but uh, uh, Tom and, and Ozan did. So I think there's some, there's some ability there to work with them. Maybe there is a record box cloud service. So, Perhaps there is there is something there. I, I don't know, Ozan. Did, did you get any sense that that they might be interested in something like that? Yeah, there is an active conversation around that. Is essentially integrating with Recordbox so that you can do things inside of Recordbox and then use something like a cloud system, then just automatically push that into Tribe. And that's been the the subject of the conversation. That's what we want, of course. That would make things so much easier for you and um, just be awesome for everybody. They now are figuring out their own long-term business strategy and their technology strategy. So most likely throughout this year, we'll hear more about that. And there's a possibility that towards the end of the year, at least we'll have some type of integration, uh, but it's still just sort of, you know, the conversation's in progress. Um, yeah. That's the update. More updates as that comes in. Thanks, thanks for the question, Mixer. Um, we got KTZ. I don't want to hear any Mankini talk, though. Please. <laughs> yeah, you're good, bro. Um, Long-awaited feature. When do we finally get the local, um, what's it called, the folder refresh? So we don't have to close Tribe every time we add new music while having it running? Yeah, I can, I can answer that. Um, Hunter said that he wants to do that. We have that for the streaming services. It's it's a bit uh, different. Um, it's a different uh, technological challenge. But um, yeah, he, he's he's aware of that, and and that's on the list of fixes. Yeah, that would be that would be great for our PC VR users to kind of do it. You know, be able to do it live, take requests, throw throw stuff yeah. in on the fly. Yep, for for sure. All right, thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Uh, someone was asking about lessons, one-on-one -on -one lessons in in Twitch. One-on-one um, -on -one lessons. It, it, that's it's it's hard to provide those as an official service. Um, you know, that's the especially with our mentors, the time is is pretty valuable. So the workshops are the best bet for that. Um, there are there are people around that uh, you know in the community um, that that you know are are willing to help out too. Um, so yeah, just just ask um, nicely. And you know, perhaps someone will 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 jump in with you. You know, um, if if they're uh, willing and able to. So that that might be an option. Uh, workshops uh, are, are your other option for sure. And hopefully, some of this new lesson content, including you know, video inside of Tribe, will will help with that as well. So you can watch some videos and and uh, uh, you know, on your own time, be able to do that. Cool. Um, yeah, I guess we'll 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 start to wrap this up. We're hitting the hour mark. Um, I I will give the ability for one last question. If anyone has has anything, jump in. We'll end it here. I will jump into the video call on the town hall uh, uh, tribe video call, so we can continue the conversation there. But yeah, 
I guess we'll wrap it up. Thanks everybody. Appreciate you coming out. Appreciate all the feedback and yeah, look at, look out for a couple of things. Look out for um, the survey, um, look out for the new environments and yeah, we just, just crave your feedback. So please, please, please give it to us, please. Yeah. Anything else, Tom Ozan, before we uh, close her down? Just, Just thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks for showing up. Really appreciate the questions. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Bill. See, see you on, see you in tribe. Bye, bye.